friends, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are live from the show floor at AWS reInvent. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, John Furrier. John, how was your lunch? My lunch was great. It wasn't very <laughs> complex like IT is today, so it was very Appropriate easy. Appropriate for the conversation <laughs> we're about to have. Great, great guests coming up, CUBE alumni, and, and great conversation around complexity and how it's all being tamed. So be good. Yes, and, and, and on that note, let's welcome John from Do It, as well as Danny from In Infinox. I swear I'll be able to say that right by the end of this. Thank you guys so much for being here. How's the show going for you? Excellent. So far it's been a great a great event, you know, back back to pre-COVID days. You're still smiling day three, that's an awesome sign. John, what about you? Fantastic, it's, it's been busier than ever. That, well, that's exciting. I, I think we certainly feel that way here on theCUBE. We're doing yeah. dozens of videos, it's absolutely awesome just in case we can dig in a little deeper throughout the rest of the segment, just in case the audience isn't familiar. Let's get them acquainted with your company. So let's start with Doit, John. Yeah, thanks, Savannah. So Doit is a global technology company, and we're partnering with the leading cloud providers around the world and digital native companies to provide value uh, and solve complexity, John, to your, to your introductory point, uh, with, with all of the complexities associated with operating in the cloud, scaling a business in the cloud. A lot of companies um, are just looking to sort of have somebody else take care of that problem for them, or have somebody they can call when they run into, you know, into problems scaling. And so with a combination of tech, advanced technology, uh, some of the best cloud experts in the world, and unlimited tech support, we're, we're offloading a lot of those problems for our customers, and we're doing that on a global basis, so it's, it's an exciting time. I can imagine pretty much everyone here on the show floor is dealing with that challenge of complexity. So uh, a everyone. couple customers for you in the house. What about you, Danny? Uh, uh, I, I come from a company which operates in the financial industry market, so we are essentially a global broker, financial trading broker, which what this means for those people who don't really understand, essentially we allow clients to be able to trade digitally and speculate with different pricing, pricing tools online. Uh, we offer uh, different products uh, for different type of clients. We have institutional clients, we've got our affiliates, partners, programs, and we've got the retail clients. Um, and this is where AWS and Doit comes handy, allows us to offer our products digitally across the globe, and one of the key values for us here is that we can actually offer a product in regions where other people don't. So for example, we don't compete in North America, we don't compete in EME in Europe, but we use Do It in AWS to solve our complex challenges in regions that naturally by, uh, depending on where they're based, they have like issues, and that's how we deliver our product. And which regions in Latin America? LATAM, uh, the entire Africa subcontinent, Middle East, Southeast Asia. The culture is just demographic is different and what you used to have here is not exactly what you have over there. And obviously that yeah. brings a lot of challenges yeah. with onboarding and clients, deposit, trading activities, CDN, latency, and all of that stuff. It's interesting how each region's different in their, their posture with the cloud. Some want to roll their own, some want out of the box. So again, this brings up this theme this year, guys, which is about end-to-end, -end, seeing purpose-built, like specialty solutions, a lot of solutions. Now going end to end with data is, makes, kind of makes it more complicated. So again, we got more complexity coming, but the greatest of the cloud is you can abstract that away. So we are seeing this is a big opportunity for partners to innovate. You're seeing a lot of joint engineering, a lot more complexities coming still, but still end to end is the end game, so to speak. Absolutely, John. I mean, one, one of the sort of ways we describe what we try to do for our customers like Infinox is to be your co-pilot in the cloud, which essentially means you know, what an apt analogy. I think so, yeah. Well, I think well it, done there. I think it works, Savannah, yeah. Um, so, so as I mentioned, these are, the majority or almost all of our customers are pretty sophisticated, tech-savvy companies. So they don't, you know, they know for most, for the most part what they're trying to achieve. They're approaching scale, they're at scale, or they're, or they're through that scale point. Um, and they, they just want to have somebody they can call, right? They need technology to help abstract away the complex problems so they're not doing so, so much manual cloud operational work or sometimes they just need help picking the next tech, right, to solve yeah. the end-to-end -end use case that, 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 they're, that they're dealing with and, in business. And Danny, you're rolling out solutions, so you're, you're on the front lines, you've got to make it easier. You don't want to get in the weeds on something that should be taken care of. Correct. Um, I mean, one of the reasons we got to do it is you need to, in order to involve do it, you need to know your problems, understand your challenges, almost like a self-review. Only, and you have to be one way, halfway through the cloud journey. You need to know your problems, what you want to achieve, where you want to end up, a roadmap for the next five years, what you want to achieve, are we fixing or developing a building, and then involve uh, those guys to come and help you because they cannot just come with magic wand and fix all your problems. You need to do that yourself. It's not like starting the journey by yourself. 
Yeah, one thing that's not played up in this event, I will say, they maybe, I don't know if they missed, maybe Werner will hit it tomorrow, but I think they kind of missed it a little bit. But the developer productivity has been a big issue. We've seen that this year. One of the big themes on theCUBE is developer productivity, more velocity on the development side to keep pace with what's on, what solutions are rolling out to customers. And the other one is skills gap. So, and people like, and people have old skills. Like we see VMware being bought by Broadcom, for instance, you got a lot of IT operators at VMware, they got to go cloud somewhere. So you got new talent, existing talent, skill gaps, people are comfortable, yet the new stuff's there, developers got to be more productive. How do you guys see that? Because that's going to be, how that plays out is going to impact the channel, the partnership relationship, your ability to deliver. Uh, What's your can reaction I this to that? First? Yeah. Well, I think we obviously have a tech savvy team. We've got developers, we've got DevOps, we've got infrastructure guys, but we only got so much resource that we can afford and essentially by Involving to it, I've doubled our staff, so we got a tech savvy senior solution architect, which comes to do the sexy stuff, actually develop and design a new, better offering, better product that makes us competitive. And this is where we involve, essentially we use the Do It staff as an Infinox staff, employees at our demand, there's literally an army of qualified people. Uh, we can actually cherry pick who we want for the call to do X, Y, and Z, and they're there to, to support you, you just have to ask for help. And this is how we fill our gap uh, uh, from technical skills or budget constrained within, you know, within recruitment. And I think, I think what, what Danny is touching on, John, what you mentioned, is, is really the, the sort of the core founding principle of the company, right? Um, it's hard enough for companies like Infinox to hire staff that can help them build their business and deliver the value proposition that, they're, that they see, right? And so our reason for existence is to sort of take care of the rest, right? We can help, you know, operate your cloud, show you the most effective way to do that, whether they're FinOps problems, whether they're DevOps problems, whether they're DevSecOps problems, all of these sort of classic operational problems that get in the way of the core business mission. You're not in the business of running the cloud. You're in the business of delivering customer value. We can help you, you know, manage your cloud. And it's your job to do it. It <laughs> is our job to do it. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't resist the pun there. How long have you all been working together? Uh, I would say 15 months. We took, we took a bit of a conservative approach. We hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. <laughs> so I didn't trust do it. I give them one account, start with Dev, UAT, SID, because you cannot, you just have to learn the journey yourself. So I think I would, my advice for clients is give it a six months. Once you establish the relationship, build the relationship, give them one by one, start slowly. You actually understand by yourself the skills, the capacity that they have, and also the, for me, consultancy is really important. And after that, it just opens up, yeah. and we are now involving them. We've got a new project, we've got a problem statement. The first thing we do, we don't Google it, we just say do it, yeah. log a ticket, <laughs> we got the team. You're a verb. Yeah. So <laughs> In this case, we have to be a verb. The puns are endless here, <laughs> on the Cube in general, but with something like that, it's great. <laughs> I got to ask you a question, because this is interesting. John, you know, we talked last year on the Cube, and, and again, this is an example of how innovation's playing out. If you look at the announcements Adam Selesky did, and then Swami had 13 or so announcements, I won't say it's getting boring, but when you hear boring, boring is good when you start getting into these, these gaps in the platforms as it grows. I won't say they was boring, because that really wasn't boring. I like the data It's itself. all fascinating, but, John. But, it, but it's a lot of gap filling. You know, 50 connectors, you got, you know, yeah. all glue layers being, being built in, the AI's critical. The maturation of cloud is there. What's the innovation? You got a lot of gaps being filled. Boring is good, like Kubernetes, we say there. Boring means it's being invisible. That means it's going away. What's the exciting things from your perspective in cloud here? Well, I think, I mean, boring is an interesting word to use because a company with the heritage of AWS is constantly evolving. I mean, the, at the core of that company's culture is innovation, technology development and innovation. And they're building for builders, as, as you know, just as well as I do. Yeah. And so, um, but what we find across our customer base is that companies that are scaling or at scale are using maybe a smaller set of those services, but they're really leveraging them in interesting ways. And there is a very long tail of deeper, more sophisticated, fit for purpose, more specific services. And Adam announced, who, you know, who knows how, another 20 or 30 services, and it's happening year after year yeah. after year. And I think one of the things that, that Danny might attest to is, I, I spoke about the reason we exist and the reason yeah. we formed the company, is we hold it very, a very critical part of our mission is to stay abreast of all of those developments as they emerge, so that Danny and his, and his <laughs> crew don't have to. Right? And so when they have a, a, a question about SageMaker or they have a question about sort of the new big data service that Adam has announced, we take it very seriously. Our job is to be able to answer that question quickly and accurately. And I noticed your shirt, if you can just give a little shirt there, FinOps, CloudOps, DevOps, do it. The intersection of the finance, the tuning is now, we're hearing a lot of price performance, 
cost recovery, not cost recovery, but cost management. Yeah, so we're seeing building scale, but now, now tuning almost a craft. The craft of the cloud is here. What's your reaction to that? It, it absolutely is, and this is a story as old as the cloud, honestly. And companies, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, companies tend to follow the same sort of maturity journey when they first start out, whether they're migrating to the cloud or they were born in the cloud, as most of our customers are. There's, a, there's, a, there's, an, there's an access of visibility and understanding and optimization of tuning a craft, to use your term, and, and cost management truly is a 10-year-old problem that is as prevalent and relevant today as it was you know, 10 years ago. And there's a lot of talk about um, the economics associated with the cloud, and it's not certainly not always cheaper to run, in fact, it rarely is cheaper to run your business from any of the public cloud providers. The key is to do it and right size it and make sure it's operating in accordance and alignment with your business, right? It's okay for cloud costs to go up so long as your top line is also <laughs> going up. You spend more cloud to save cloud. That's it's penny wise, pound foolish, it's always a little bit, always yeah. a little bit well, of, a, we, of a dilemma. On, on the cost saving, we didn't want to just save money. If you want to save money, just shut down your services, right? <laughs> so it's about making money. So this is where do it comes, like we actually start making, okay, we spend a bit more now, but in about six months time, I will be making more money. And we've just did that. We've rolled out a new application for, we've got a new product recovering, hosted on AWS fully with the guys, support a lot of long, boring, boring, boring calls but they are productive because we actually now have a better product, competitive, it's tailored for our clients, it's cost effective, and we're actually making money. It, when, from, something's from, invisible, from it, when something's invisible, it's working, you know, talking about it, means it's, it's, it's operational. It's exactly. Not, it's well, to that point, John, one of the things <laughs> we're most proud of um, in 20, you know, this year was, was the launch of our product we called FlexSave, which essentially does exactly what you've described. It's, it's looking for automation and, 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 and automatic ways of Yes, saving money, but offering you opportunities to, to, to improve the economics associated with your cloud infrastructure. Uh, yeah, and improving the efficiency across the board. 100%. It, it's, oh, it's awesome. Let's, and and it's, it's my understanding there's some reporting and insights that you're able to then translate through from Do It to your CTO and across the company. Danny, what's that like? What do you get to see working with them? Well, the problem is like the CTO asked me to do all of that. It's funny <laughs> he thinks that he's doing it. But essentially, they have an excellent portal that basically looks up all of our instances on the one place you've got like good analytics on your cost, cost anomalies, uh, budget, cost allocation, but I didn't want to do that either. So what I have done is taken the next step. I actually sold this to, the, to my company completely. So my finance team goes there, they do it themselves, they log in, ch check all the billing, the cost allocation. I actually has zero iteration with them if I don't hear anything from them, which is one of the benefits. But also there is a lot of other products, like the FlexSafe is literally like, you just click a finger and you start saving money, it's just like that. Is it's it? that easy button we've been talking about on the yeah, show. Exactly, totally, yeah, exactly, exactly yeah. how it is. But there is obviously outside of the cost management, you actually can look at what is the resource you're using, do you actually need it, how often you use it, think about the, the long-term goal, what you're trying to achieve, and use the analytics to, and actually I have to say the analytics much better than AWS. In, 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 in CMP, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just more user friendly, more interactive, as opposed to you know building the, the hey, one in AWS. It's a good business model, make things easy for your customers, easy to simple just to use. Easy. It's got to be nice to hear, John. Well, uh, well, so first of all, thank you, Danny. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we work, you know, but you know, in all seriousness, you know, we, we work, uh, Danny mentioned the trust word earlier. This is at the core of, if we don't, if we're not able to build trust with our clients, our business is dead, it, it just doesn't exist. It can't scale, in fact, it'll go the opposite direction. And so, we're, we work very, very hard to earn that trust, and we're willing to start small, to Danny's example. Start small and grow, and that's why we're very, one of the things we're most proud of is, is how few customers tend to leave us year over year. We have customers that have been with us for 10 years. You know, Andy Jassy always has, I just saw an interview him, it was on the New York Times event in New York today, as the CEO of Amazon, but he's always said, in these build-out phases, you got to work backwards from the customer and innovate on behalf of the customer because that's the answer that will always be a good answer for the outcome versus optimizing for just profit, you know what I'm saying, or other things. So well, we're still I, in build-out mode. You know, as a, as, a, as a core fundamental sort of product concept, if you're not solving important problems for a customer, what are you? Why, why are you investing? It just and doesn't make th any this sense. This is the beauty we do it. We actually, they wait for you to come to do the next step. They don't sell me anything. They don't bug me with emails. They're ready. When you're ready to make that journey, you just log a ticket and then come and help you. Uh -huh. And this is the beauty. It's just, it's just not your journey. I love it. That's a, that's a beautiful note to lead us to our new tradition on theCUBE. We have a little bit of a challenge for the both of you. Uh -oh. 
We're looking for your 30 second Instagram reel thought leadership sizzle anecdote. Either one of you want to go first? John looks a little nauseous. Danny, you want to give it a go? <laughs> well, we've got a few expressions, but we don't Google it. We just do it. And the key take, that's what we do now at, at Infinox. And also what we do is actually using their staff as an Infinox employees, richly like that's what we do. Well we do done. It. Well done. Didn't even need the 30 seconds. No. Fantastic work, Danny. I love that. All right, John, now you do have to go. Oh, okay. I'll pick this. You know, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier, if that's okay. I think we, you know, we exist as a company to sort of help our customers get back to focusing on why they started the business in the first place, which is innovating and delivering value to customers, and we'll help you take care of the rest. It's as simple as that. Awesome. Well done, you absolutely nailed it. I want to just acknowledge your fan club over there watching. Hello everyone from the Do It team. Good oh. job, team. I love, it's very <laughs> cute when guests show up with an entourage <laughs> to the cube. We like to see it. You obviously deserve the entourage. You're, you're both wonderful. Thanks again for being here on the show. Oh yeah, go ahead, John. Well, I would just like to thank Danny for, for agreeing to serve us. Thanks, thanks for having yes. Great to spend time with you. Hey. Absolutely. Well Appreciate done, let's do it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, fantastic gentlemen. Well, thank you all for tuning in to this Wonderful start to the afternoon here from AWS reInvent. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada with John Furrier. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.